Welcome back to another episode of Spank Ranch Garage. Miata is turbocharged and running on Mega Squirt. It's on a base tune right now. It runs, but not very well. Uh, apparently the owner already drifted it with the base tune, so it must not be that bad. But anyway, we'll pull it into the shop, go over it, make sure it's all tidy, and then we'll get her on the dyno and get it tuned up. You know the deal. First it comes into the shop to get its look over. Make sure everything's good to go and safe. I check the oil. Dipstick is handle broken off. All Miatas do that. That's normal. Looks like it's got a coil on plug conversion on it with Toyota coils. Uh, nice little mini turbo there. Coolant's full. Oil level looks good. Oil looks clean. I don't see any obvious leaks up here. So this front tire's flat. I'm going to go ahead and put some air in that, get this thing in the air, and see how it looks from the bottom side. And underneath this thing, it is a drift car and it does get used. So there's mud packed into the steering rack, everything else. However, it's actually very clean under here. Not many oil leaks. It looks pretty nicely built. It's got two mufflers on it, which makes me very excited. Went ahead and checked the fuel pressure regulator reference line. It's running the intake manifold, all that stock. I don't have any reason to suspect that's not working. It's a VE-based computer. I'll know very quickly if fuel pressure is not responding the way it should be, so I'm not gonna test it. What I do need to test, though, is our crank angle with a timing light, because it is a standalone. We need to make sure that zero degrees on the standalone matches zero degrees at the crank. If not, you can get into some pretty dangerous situations. I don't have a timing light that'll run off the uh, low voltage side of the coil, so I take a 5.3, like Chevy pickup, spark plug wire, Stick that on the Miata plug, pull the boot off the Toyota coil, the LS uh, wire fits right into it, so that way the engine will still run. Clamp on your timing light here, and then we'll be looking down at the indicator. After I set the ECU to fix at 10 degrees, we'll make sure it lines up on the crank like it should. We'll make any adjustments we need from there. Typically, I found that the base tune does not line up with the crank on these Miatas. All right, so I hooked up to this computer. It's Mega Squirt. Quite refreshing after all the OEM stuff I've been doing. Um, this Miata has a real throttle position sensor, which is cool. I don't believe they come with that. You have to add that. I don't know. I don't know much about Miatas. Um, but I always just look over the vitals here, make sure everything looks reasonable. We'll start it up. And let it get up the temperature, or at least to where it'll have a steady idle to check my timing. Motor's up the temperature. She's idling very smooth. Nice stable AFR, timing's not wandering. So let's go ahead and lock the timing at 10 degrees. The reason I picked 10 degrees is because the Miata has a mark on the crank balancer at 10 degrees. So essentially here we are going to go to a fixed timing. We're gonna turn the table off and the timing for fixed degrees is already at 10. So we're gonna burn that. All right, so now she's locked in at 10 degrees. I'm gonna go throw a timing light on her and see how it looks mechanically. Timing light set up, clipped onto the LS plug wire, Toyota coil, jumper cables to the battery because it's all the way in the trunk and I'm pretty ghetto. And uh, she's flashing right along. Who knows what we'll be able to see on the phone here. But I can see that the 10 and the zero are lining up just as Mazda intended, so that is very cool. I realize you probably can't see the timing marks on the camera, uh, but they are there and they are spot on. So this is probably the first Miata with a mega square plug and play on it. It's ever come here, it's been spot on with the timing. I always have to tweak it a degree or two, so that's really cool. Here's a close up of the end of the Toyota coil pack. So you just snap that boot back on, drop her in the hole. All right, so we know we're happy with our timing. Go into here, ignition, options, wheel decoder back to it using a table again um, and then we'll burn that so this is the trigger offset here this is what you would play with to dial in your timing to make it match mechanically under the hood another thing I'm noticing with this motor is it is up to temperature and we're still in warm-up enrichment WUE so let's see what's going on with that. I have a feeling that's just set up wrong. Start up idle, uh, warm up enrichment. Okay, so your last break point's at 2.12 here. It's actually pulling some fuel at that point. 
Uh, it's just bad practice. I like to totally get out of this at about 170 degrees or so. And we set this to 100, because that's basically 0% fueling and runs straight off the fuel table. We'll go ahead and burn that. Now warm up enrichment is off. We're running solely off the fuel table. I don't like how this car cranks and starts and idles. And I'm realizing I have no control over the IAC. So no matter what I set this duty cycle to, nothing happens. So I'm gonna have to do some troubleshooting on that, try to figure out what's going on there. It's just a little word on idle control with Miatas. So right now I'm commanding 100% idle duty cycle. This thing should be idling at 2000 RPMs. Well, it's not. This is the second car it's come in with this setting wrong. Uh, these valves are what I call normal. Mega Squirt calls normal. Well, all right, let's call it inverted because that makes sense, but 100% will be valve wide open. So change it to that and burn it. Now she's idling like it should. Without the idle control valves controlling properly, you can see here, I'll drag this point upwards. You'll see the engine respond to it. So that's where we need to be with this. You need good idle control to get these things to start properly. If you're going to be data logging using your wideband and the mega squirt, make sure they match. These are very close, good enough for me. So, but I've seen them have huge offsets before, so don't let that trick you. Got my idle and a uh, little bit of, you know, off idle, part throttle, that kind of stuff, but mainly got the idle control set up exactly how I want. So you'll see how this thing returns to idle. Drops right back down like stock, doesn't overshoot, doesn't undershoot. AFRs look healthy. I also go ahead and throw that on, headlights on, windshield wipers on, I load up the electrical system, and we try it again, we make sure everything's okay. Little dip there, I'll work on that, but pretty close. I'm experiencing something I've never experienced before. Watch this, clutch in, transmission into first gear. It idles up and says the AC is on. Pull it out of gear, it goes off. Got to figure out what that's about. All right, idle air conditioning idle up. The input is launch, which is the clutch safety switch. It's probably the only Miata I've ever touched that has a working clutch safety switch. So we go ahead and turn this off. Definitely don't need that doing that. Now, Put it in gear, clutch in, everybody's happy. That's all I got for part one. Uh, if you haven't noticed yet, the majority of the work in tuning these cars is the starting, cranking, drivability, configuring the ECU, checking the hardware, making sure the timing's correct, the fuel pressure's correct, everything else. Uh, really, I spend most of my time doing that. The dyno is the easy part. So this thing's ready to go on the dyno. I think we'll get out there tomorrow if I get out of work at the right time. So uh, stay tuned for part two. We'll see how it does.